Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Movies Recapped. If you are new here, then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you can get the notification of new videos. Let's start with the video. In this movie, when the Dolenganger children are five years old, they live happily with their parents, Christopher and Corinne Dolenganger, in Pennsylvania. Chris is 14 years old. Kathy is 12, and the twins, Carrie and Corey, are 5. This all changes when, Christopher is killed in a car accident, leaving his family devastated, and deeply in debt, as described above. A little over 4 months later, Corinne informs them, that they will be moving to Virginia, to live with her wealthy parents. She explains that she had a strained relationship, with her parents and that she had changed her last name as a result of this. When the children arrive at Foxworth Hall, Corinne's gloomy, claustrophobic, and cold-hearted mother, Olivia, takes them to a small room in the attic, where they will spend the night. The following day, the children are given a list of rules, and Olivia informs them that they must remain, in the attic at all times during the day. Her father, Malcolm, disowned her for eloping with Christopher, who was actually her biological, half-uncle, her father's younger half-brother, and the two of them were disinherited. She promises the children, that she will persuade her father, to forgive her, once he has forgiven her, she will introduce him to the children, and the two of them, will live happily ever after, at Foxworth Hall together. With time, Corinne's visits to the attic, become less frequent as she grows, more comfortable, with her newfound wealth and develops, a romantic relationship, with her father's lawyer, Bart Winslow. Although her father has forgiven her, she is unable to allow, her children to meet him because, she falsely claimed to be the mother, of none, as a result, they will be forced to remain, in the attic until Malcolm dies, she explains to the children, during the following year, Corinne's visits are all but non-existent. The twins' growth has been severely, stunted as a result of a lack of, fresh air and sunlight, at the same time, Kathy and Chris, are reaching puberty. Inadvertently walking, into Kathy while she is trying, on her first bra is a bad move, on his part. Olivia apprehends, them and accuses them of being sinners, and she attempts to cut Kathy's hair, as punishment. Christine intercedes but, threatens to starve them for a week, if Chris does not take charge of the, haircutting situation himself. Kathy and Chris, refuse to comply and instead give, their remaining food to the twins, who are subsisting primarily, on water and other liquids. Olivia appears to have relented, and has left them a basket of food, however, the next morning, Kathy discovers, tar in her hair when she wakes up. Chris reluctantly cuts her hair, as he tells her how beautiful she is and, how he knows it is wrong for him, and everyone else to think of her in that way. Another year has passed, and Corinne has not paid, a visit in several months. Kathy and Chris, come to the conclusion, that their mother has abandoned, them and begin making plans to flee the country. When Corinne finally returns, she joyfully announces, that she has married Bart, and that the reason for her absence, had been her honeymoon, in Europe. She is irritated that, the children are not more enthusiastic, and she appears to be completely unaware, of the twins' deterioration. Olivia appears soon after, bearing sugar powdered donuts, which she claims are a gift, from their mother to the children. Chris is beaten with a belt by Olivia, after he insists on being addressed by his given name, rather than as boy. Kathy tends to his wounds, and admits that she is afraid, of losing him in the process. Chris reassures her that, nothing will happen to him, and the two of them embrace. The following day, when Olivia arrives to deliver their food, Chris informs her that she was correct in her assessment of them as, the devil's spawn, and begs for forgiveness. After she has left, Chris reveals that, 
The entire scene was a ruse to obtain an impression of the attic key in soap, and he proceeds to carve a wooden replica of the key. With their ability to leave the attic now restored, Kathy and Chris begin stealing money from their mother's room, in order to fund an escape by train. Kathy discovers Bart sleeping in the middle of the night, and kisses him. Afterwards, Chris overhears his mother and Bart discussing, a dream in which a young, blonde-haired girl walks into the room and kisses Bart on the cheek. Chris confronts Kathy, who assures him that the kiss had no meaning, and that she had only done it out of curiosity. Chris is furious. She kisses him, and the two of them end up having sexual relations. Chris tells Kathy that he loves her and that he will never be able to love anyone else. They decide to relocate to Florida. Kathy informs Olivia and Corinne that Corey is ill and demands that her mother transport Corey to a hospital, threatening retaliation if she does not comply. Corinne informs them the following day that Corey had pneumonia and died, and that he has already been buried. Kathy and Chris, distraught over Corey's death and fearful for their lives, decide to flee with all of the money they have accumulated as well as as much jewelry as they can carry in their luggage. While searching for valuables, they come to the realization that Corinne and Bart have abandoned Foxworth Hall. In the course of listening in on a conversation between the butler and a maid, Chris overhears that Olivia has been leaving poison in the attic to kill the mice and that their grandfather passed away seven months ago. Kathy demonstrates to Chris how Corey's pet mouse died after consuming a piece of powdered donut, revealing that the poison was present in their food. Kathy and Carrie are able to escape after Olivia arrives to take their key. Chris manages to keep Olivia at bay long enough for them to escape. Olivia runs after them, but when Chris closes the door and turns off the lights, she panics due to her claustrophobia and runs away. Olivia tries to convince them that it was their mother, not her, who poisoned them, but they simply ignore her and climb out the window, running for their lives. During their escape, they come face to face with the butler, who recognizes them as Corinne's children, and helps them escape. He tells them to flee while he turns off the electric fence for them, as he is terrified of them. She is relieved when Chris tells her that their ordeal is finally over as they board the train to Florida. Kathy swears vengeance on her sister's mother. Thanks for watching this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and become the family member of the movies recap. Thank you. See you in next video. Bye bye.